Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch gorgeous sunrise over these frosty, snowy, cold mountains. It was so cold I had to grow a scraggly beard just to paint it for you, right? You're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. Holy moly, how did we get here? Jeez Louise. All right, so I'm going to explain the colors we have today. Uh, titanium white, bright red, cad yellow, sap green, uh, thalo blue, prussian blue, alizarin crimson, and titanium black. Of course, any variation of these colors that you have is going to work out just fine. So let's get to painting, all right? We're going to load up our brush and make a nice, gorgeous sunset. Let's redo Sunset Mountain. We'll call this one Sunset Mountain 2, right? Oh, it's so exotic, Sunset Mountain 2. What is going to be different? We may use this green. We may use a whole lot of stuff. So... I'm going to show you a cool technique on how to make a really bright sky. And a lot of times I forget how to do it myself. So we're going to take the cup, nice old nasty cup. You can see all the colors and all the stuff that we've used on this poor cup and kind of decide where we want our sunrise to be or sunset or whatever it is, our super bright area. And we're going to just make a wicked circle right around that sun. Okay. Now we don't want to really touch the center of that. Okay. That's going to be our bright white sun. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to pull in slightly from every direction. See how we're doing this? Slightly from every direction. Okay, we're dragging it in from the sides, leaving that white, super bright area. Okay, now that's going to be our bright white sun. So we don't want to go too far into it. And especially our, our colors are going to move a little bit. So we got just about like that. Okay, and then we're going to take the rest of it. We're going to pull it outwards. Pull it out. It's like a, it looks like a sunrise from a from when we were kids, right? We'd paint a little sunrise. That's it. That's our beautiful sun. Okay, put some green grass in a tree. <clears throat> That's fantastic. All right, let's switch to a bigger brush though, because we need to we need to cover a little bit more area. So we're gonna wash that brush off, beat the devil out of it. Switch to a bigger brush, and let's go into our red. Go into our red, a little bit of yellow if it drags onto your brush, that's okay. You can mix them up a little bit, right? We're going to come in here very thick, heavy-handed with the red, though, because we really want the red to stand out. And with this liquid white, it really wants to blend. Oh, by the way, do we say we have Bob Ross liquid white on the canvas? The technique does not work without that stuff or linseed oil, some sort of something that is going to allow these thick colors to blend together. And in this case, we also gessoed our canvas before starting with uh, Artist Loft, you know, level one gesso, white gesso, uh, acrylic white gesso. And uh, it just makes our canvas a little bit more smooth, that's all. Just a little smoother, right? Nice dark red circle. It's like an eyeball in there, right? Okay, we're gonna go, we don't even need to wash the brush. We'll go right into the crimson, just like this. Just like so, onto the crimson. Both sides, nice and thick, a lot of paint. We come around here, we, again, I like mine being very vibrant sky, so we dump a lot of color in there, right? If you don't want it to blend too much with that liquid white, you have to use a lot of color. So, and what's very cool is you can like literally blend it all the way, and it'll be this beautiful color that I can't come up with, that no one else can come up with. It's perfectly unique to your painting because of how much paint you used and where it blended and how much liquid white you had. Everyone's gonna be a little bit unique. It's fantastic, right? So we're falling into this tunnel of light. Okay, now with all that crimson and the red, I'm not really worried about the, the brush turning uh, green, which since we've had our yellow and we're now gonna go into the blue, I'm not really worried about it too much. We've got all that red color in there, it's fantastic. All the blue, all the red, and then we're gonna go with this darker blue, right? So we have the lighter blue here, the phthalo blue. I'm gonna drop that into a few little sections. Just kind of mirror it from side to side, top and bottom over here. And let's do a little bit more over here. Just very lightly. And then we're gonna come in with that darker blue, which is just a much deeper, darker blue. Imagine that, look at that, oh. All right, bam, 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 bam. Cover our edges. Cause we gotta cover the sides. It just takes a minute. Cover your edge. See that deep, dark blue? That's that Prussian blue, it is fantastic. There we go. Now again, we're gonna take that Prussian blue over here and we're gonna pull it in from the bottom. Just kind of let it blend in with itself. And now we've created this whole little circle. Look, that, that one wanted to grow a little bit more. Wanted to kiss the, kiss the crimson in there, right? Here, there's a little bit of blue up here. 
And all it is is the two light, the light blues and the darker blue, and that's all. And if you only have one blue, that's fine. You just use that one blue. And that is gravy. Look, we can pull that blue and start to make like a Pac-Man guy. Nom, 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 nom. Eat that guy up. Eat that guy up over here. Okay, really trying to cover in, fill in all those little pores of our canvas. Have some of that blue go up on here where we don't want to have it go into the yellow, right? So you got to give it some room to kind of grow. Blend it very lightly in some areas, very dark in some other areas. Light, heavy, dark. It's lovely. Whatever you do is going to be fantastic and unique to yours, right? Now we're going to take and wash all the color off this brush. We definitely don't want to go back into the center where that nice bright white is with this dirty brush. Definitely not. Bad idea. With every color in the rainbow about, this is back into our bucket, right? Now dab that off on a paper towel. You don't want it to be too wet, so you gotta dab it off. You gotta dab it off. And you're like, Josh, the sky is like, what is? what are you doing? So we put our palette down so we could have both hands available. Ho, oh, just like that. And then we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna show you step by step exactly what to do to have yours come out just like mine. Are you ready? All right, guys, now we're super up close. Look at how up close we are. Oh my goodness, look at the bottom of the TV, right? So, super up close, nice and personal. You won't even see me anymore, except for on this other camera. Oh. Now we're gonna go into that white area with our, our fresh dry brushes, nothing on this brush, right? Into that white area, just back and forth, little crisscrosses. Don't wanna do it too much, because I want it to stay nice and bright. Now we're gonna come into that yellow. Again, we can pull it in from every angle. So you get down to this nice little teeny tiny little white, perfectly white dot, right? Now we're gonna come out here to the edge of where the red is, gonna pull some of the red out, some of the, sorry, some of the yellow out, some of the red in, and we're just gonna crisscross and start to make it soft. You can do the same thing with the crimson out here in the red. We wanna save some of that yellow, that bright yellow color, and we definitely don't wanna have that dark line right there, so we're gonna come back to this guy and just very lightly, very lightly, just blend it out. Cool little thing, and then we'll put like a bit of mountain or some sort of something in there, right? Now, come over here, <clears throat> and again, just ever so lightly, blending out until we don't have a perfect circle anymore. That's not what we want. We don't want a perfect circle. We want to have this beautiful, or a hard line. We want to have this beautiful, soft little bit of blending, right? It goes from this yellow to the orange to the pink, red, purple, all these beautiful colors. And you can see I'm sort of staying in my red area, now we're gonna come into our blue area and sort of really drag them both in and out. Some longer strokes, some shorter strokes. Just like that, get this beautiful little sky going. It's fantastic. All right, then we're gonna switch back to another dry brush and do it again, especially in this area over here. All right, you can let these all blend into this darkish. No, Siri, my goodness, we're, how many bloopers are we gonna have? We're in the middle of the video, not at the end. So it doesn't matter about this darkness down here. This is all gonna be shadows or fog or mist or, or snow or grass or whatever it's gonna be. So you don't have to worry about it is my point. All right, take some of that darkness, blend it out so we get this wrapping around of the color with this cool little effect. Some of the times you can drag the color in from the sides and create little shapes and cool little things, right? It's just the light just straining to get there. Now we have to switch back to our dry brush that we already cleaned, right? We're gonna go in again and just try to keep that area nice and bright, not try to bring too much of the color into it. And then poof, we get this really bright spot, right? It's fantastic, fantastic. You can even take a bit, if you don't, if it's not bright enough, put a little bit of white right in the center. And just blend that guy out again, pulling at every little soft angle. And the more and more times you do it, the brighter and brighter and brighter it becomes. But now we have this super bright little bit of sun back there and a little bit of thick paint. Come on, Josh, can't have texture back in our sky. That's not gonna work. There we go, cool little thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome little thing, right? And you just keep blending until it's nice and soft. Doesn't have to look like mine. Doesn't have to look like anybody else's, except for yours, right? Blend, 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 blend. And yours doesn't even have to, you don't even have to keep your yellow sun if you don't want to, you really don't. And it doesn't really matter because we're about to throw in some giant mountains, right? 
That's why painting is so much fun. Everyone's will be so different. You decide you want your mountain to look like this, or someone decides there needs to be a tree right here, or this, that, or the other. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I love all the differences every time I see one of the tutorials you guys do. Fantastic is what it is. All right, let's see. Gonna dry off our brushes double time, right? All right, now we're gonna come back and we're gonna make up our mountain color. So we can use all of these blues. You can use the two blues, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the same amount of both. You can use a crimson. A little bit of black, all this nastiness. Look at that, just piles of these different colors. We're gonna mix them all into one nasty, dirty black pile. It's gonna look very dark. It's gonna look like a black color paint, but it's not. When you start to throw white with it, you start to see it's a very beautiful purple kind of paint. Ooh, don't wanna get it stuck and mixed in with all of our crimson back there. There we go. And we don't know how much we're gonna need, so you never need to make a giant pile like I do, right? You can always go back and remix your color and make it some more add to it right okay we're gonna wipe off our knives we got a nice clean fresh knife blind you in the camera and then we have to decide where we want our mountain to be right and we want our mountain to be in the middle because we like throwing stuff on the sides right so you want to have your focal point sort of in the middle we tend to start going like this and then all of a sudden we're over here to the side and our mountains over here and then we want to put a big tree on the side and it gets covered and it's really hard to to get past that so let's take we might even be able to do two mountains we can do all sorts of stuff, guys. All right, look. We'll take a little bit of white from over here. We're gonna mix it in with a little pile of our purple over here. We're gonna see what kind of color it's gonna make. It's gonna make this lighter color purple. Look at that. That's fantastic. It's gonna be gorgeous. We need a little bit more white though, just to brighten it up. All right, we want it to be far away. So we need it to be light color to start. And then it's gonna blend with the liquid white and the colors that are on the canvas anyway. Okay, wipe that color off the knife, come back in, grab up the littlest bit. And maybe we go off in the distance, way back there. There was like a little piece of a mountain. Maybe it came down. Doesn't have to be a perfect uh, pointy shape or anything. All we're really worried about is what the outer edge looks like, right? So take your knife, kind of mush it on to where you can drag it, kind of create that soft outer edge. And then we can take a one inch brush or a two inch brush, whatever you're more comfortable with. Start to pull it down, but we don't want to get rid of all the initial color, right? That might end up being very neat looking. So very small, very soft little brush strokes way off in the distance, right? And then you can go back in and shape it and do different things, but we want it to stay soft and far away. At least I do. Right? Maybe we can get against that dark background. We can get the couple smallest little bits of trees to stand up back there, way off back there. Okay, then we'll come in. Let's scrape up that little bit of color, that lighter color paint. We'll just mix it back in with this darker color of its original color, right? And then we'll scrape up a nice good chunk of that dark bit and just throw in a much bigger, much more closer up mountain. It's right up here to the top, my goodness, almost. Look at that, okay? <clears throat> Fantastic. We could even put like a little chemtrail off the side. We could do all sorts of stuff, right? And you don't want to go just straight down like this. You don't want to have this just very pyramidal shaped mountain. You kind of have to let it grow off to the side. It's got to have three dimensions, right? It's almost helpful to put a, a line down the center. And now you know which is your shadowy side, which will be your highlight side. Scrape up a lot of that thick paint because it's going to try to grow on us real far. And look at the difference now. Look why we use that dark paint because it brings this mountain much closer than those ones that were off back in the distance, right? Kind of keeping along the edge of some of that, save some of that light color, that fog back there. That little bit of mist, but you don't need a whole lot. You just need the smallest bit. Show that little bit of distance back there. Very cool looking. Bam, bam, bam. You can grow up the side over there like it's Big Brother in the back, right? Do whatever it wants to do. Now we're going to take our brush and just again, we're going to pull down and then we're going to start to shape it, right? A, a, a mountain is not just all straight sideways. Maybe you have a couple that go down this way. Or they come down, they come straight down, and then they go off to the side. And now all of a sudden we're starting to build a mountain, right? They come down here, they go down there, maybe this guy went this way. Because it doesn't all have to go the same direction. 
right? Maybe these guys, there's a little bit of fog back there. This guy comes over and all of a sudden there's this giant ridge that starts to grow. Get a little bit more of that color. Start to shape him one way and then we can pull it off back the other way and just start to create all these cool little things. Fantastic little things, look at that. Pull it out to the side, let it just go out to nothing, right? It doesn't have to connect to anything. It doesn't have to do anything. You can make it a little bit darker just by adding a little bit more of that darker paint and you'd have a darker slope onto one side, All right? Get some of that down in there, just by bouncing it in, changing it, pulling it. And now all of a sudden we have this, almost like a little throne with a little guy sitting back in there. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. We haven't even highlighted it yet. And now this bit we can take, right? Say there's this big slope that comes down. It goes down this way. Might connect with this thing over here as this guy goes. And then on this side, let's pull it down the other way because why are we all going the same direction, right? Let's pull it down and be different. Change it up. Have this whole little valley start to grow. Really fantastic. Look at that. Again, all these bits, you don't have to pull out the very deepest, darkest bits of your paint. Not everything has to all be the same. And I love having this little orangish color in there. So you don't want to waste all that. But there could be a bit, could be like a flat bit back there. And then you can have all this light area in the front. You could have a section right there. You could have another section that comes in the front over there. And you just sit and build your mountain how you want it to look. Just by pulling in different directions and doing different things and all of a sudden you can start to shape it, right? And then we'll go back in and we'll use our palette knife and we'll get the job done with some highlights. Look at this one way off in the back, it's fantastic. Okay, now let's save this nice big pile of dark color because we're gonna need it for our trees, right? If we ever put any, any bits of forest down around the bottom or anything, we're gonna need some, some bit of dark paint. So, come on. Get that hair out of there, there we go. Very dangerous to try to get a hair out with a fan brush. But look at that, we have these straight drops and then it'll hit something, it'll go this way. This is telling us to go like that. This is telling us to go like this. All this section back here is gonna go this way, right? You just read your mountain and see what it's telling you to do. It's going, hey, Joanne, put it over here. Hey, Roberta, put it there. Hey, Sally, hey, Annette, hey, Jamie. I don't know, hey, I, I, I can't name up. I don't know everybody's name, but let it put it where you want to put it, right? It doesn't have, you don't have to plan it out and it doesn't have to look exactly how you planned it out. Okay, let's grab up a little bit of white. We're gonna put it down here. You know, fair, I never grab enough white. Get a little bit of blue, right? Tiniest little bit of blue compared to the white because it's so strong. Look at it, just take over. Really wants to kill all that white and turn it into blue. Okay, now we're gonna take a little bit of that dark color and mix that in there as well. Mix, 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 till you get this kind of grayish, bluish color. And you're like, oh no, I added too much dark, right? Go back, get a little bit more white, get a little bit more blue. Just mix it up again until you like the way that it looks. Yeah, nice little soft gray blue color. And that's gonna bounce well with our bright white snowy highlights, right? This guy back here, it's almost like he's missing a bit of color. And luckily we still have that color on the brush. There we go. Okay, and he's not gonna be the focal point anyway. Now I like doing the, the shadows first, right? Like that, that little bit that's back there or the bits that are up here. And just look at that, just letting the, the knife just bounce and roll and twist and turn. It's not all just the same angle. Look at where my, look at where my handle is now, right? If you focus on that, you'll focus on where the, what, a, what the knife is doing, right? Pull it off to the side. It's never just one little thing or one straight direction. I know there's that band One Direction Girls, but come on, it's never just one direction. Okay, maybe this guy we take and just kind of bounce and drag down like there's a little, see that little lip right there? And then maybe that shadow continues off down on this darker side where we had planned. All right, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a lip, just like dumping in some paint, just real nastily. It's almost like a little trail up to the top, you see that? Now, some of these are gonna be covered in the shadow as well. We can just pull these straight down. Look at this straight down like a just a jagged cliff or a ridge back of a, an ancient dragon that used to live there. This ancient dragon was frozen in a, in a spell. Look at that, it's fantastic. Okay, we're gonna, you don't have to do every piece because we're gonna go back in with the white and sort of highlight everything. Now maybe there's a little bit of that bluish that kind of connects down on our bottom area because the whole thing can't be covered in our white snow, right? And then we'll just fill in the rest. It'd be really cool. 
Let's see, maybe got a little bit down here as this guy starts to grow down. And whatever you don't like about your shadows, you can end up covering or doing, you know, maybe they go this way. And we don't even have to have a whole huge amount of them because again, we're gonna cover it with something on the sides. We always do. Josh is always doing that. So doesn't matter which way you pull, doesn't matter how many you have, doesn't matter what you're doing or what yours looks like. It really doesn't. Bob used to say that all the time. He'd be like, you know, it just, it doesn't matter what you do. Just have fun. Like, and it, it really doesn't. Like you could do it with your eyes closed and it would come out great. I'm dead cereal on that. Super cereal. Everybody ever see that South Park episode? No, am I the only one? That's fine. I can be the only one. The Al Gore episode. That's cool. Okay. Now, why don't you switch to the big knife? and uh, just gonna cover more space at once. Then we might actually end up switching back to the small knife. This may be a giant mistake. So let's get a little bit of white. And I wanna snag just the smallest bit of that bluish grayish color, just cause I don't want it to be pure white off in the distance, right? I want it to be slightly off white. So we're just very lightly grabbing some of that gray color, working it in, mixing it up. And that way it's not gonna be all white. There we go. All right, grab that all up. Now we're gonna have a very similar color to what's up here, but a, bit, a much brighter color as well. Now we're gonna come, we're gonna grab up here, come down, bam, 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 bam. And just guide your mountain how you wanna see it. And here there's a little bit there. Remember it dumps into the shadow. Remember we're not gonna see everything. So down here, it got picked up again in our mind where that other little ridge lives. Remember, grab up some of that very lightly. Like there's a roll of toilet paper on the end. It's just gonna deposit it just down like that. Nice, beautiful little patch of sunlight. Bing, got lit up just like that. Let's see here. Maybe we take a little bit more light. We can change our ridge. You can make it more vertical. You can make it more horizontal. You can do anything that you want to do. Look at that. That's very cool. Then you just take a step back and look and see what's going on. What's going to look best if I do it this way or that way? or pull it over here or pull it over there. Where's it gonna look the best, right? Again, we can't we can't miss this guy. There's gonna be a few little highlighted bits that get lit up. Not everywhere, of course, but a few. A few little things that get lit up there. And this little beam that's in the center of the canvas is really causing me a problem. And we hold it out like that. And we'll go over it until we don't see that little section. There we go. Fantastic, look at that. Really great. What's, fan what's really great is you can let these little colors mix in together. They're so similar to each other that they'll mix perfectly. They'll mix and you'll never even know that they were there. Yeah, beautiful little thing. A little bit of, little kiss of sunlight got hit right there. What's really fun is when you take a little bit of that dark color and you put it back very lightly back into your your mountainous area your very deep dark shadows back here right that sunlight's having a hard time reaching all the way back there you really just can't get it you can't hold it and we're going to take those very lightly we're going to start to make them soft right all it does is just make it blurry like a photo you have something in the front you're going to focus on and the thing behind it's very 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 softly blurry right so we need to go up in the direction that we went with our, that we came down, right? The opposite direction. So if we came down this way, we need to go up this way with our brush. Came down this way, we need to go up this way with our brush. Very soft, right? Starts to make everything look very far away. Same thing here. Very, very soft. The further you go up, the harder it's gonna be to keep everything from dragging and from looking odd, okay? Back here though, we want it to be foggy. Nice little soft bit. What's going on back there? Who knows, but there is a section. It looks like it needs to be lit up like there's a whole little bit right there. And with every light bit, needs a dark bit behind it. That's like a little protrusion of rock. And if we can get it to be bright enough. There we go, a little bit of light kissing off it right there. Just the simplest, messiest little thing. It's all you really need. Okay, now we're gonna take this guy just with the corner and just tap, 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 right? We're tapping it, we're bringing it down, bringing that color down. 
bringing that white down, bringing that blue down, right? This one, we went this way. We have to do it the same direction that we did our, our uh, knife, right? Same thing, same direction. Tap it, make it very light. Pull it out to the side, swipe it up from the bottom, and all of a sudden, bing, bang, boom, we have this wicked little soft bit of mountain with a bit of fog right at the base. Fantastic. You can just keep going on and on and on like this, making more and more and more little things. And it is great. Maybe we can get the littlest bit of tree coming off the top of this guy. Smallest little thing, just little details, right? And then we can start popping in trees down here. And that is one of my all time favorite things to do is to have little bits of forest that you can literally take and you pop them in like little bits of trees that came down, right? Lift up and get these far away little bits of forest that live back there. Very soft, very far away little trees. So they have to be very small, right? And you've got to have enough paint on your brush in order to be able to do it. There we go. Again, we don't have to really do anything. You can imagine there's a horizon down there. You could fill it with a bunch of taller trees. You could put water. You could do all sorts of stuff. We could even take a bit, say there's a whole nother giant section of, of the rocks and it went back this way. Get this knife will push all those little trees far off in the distance back there, right? Big old nasty mess. That's all we do around here, Paint with Josh. We just make messes. Pull it out like that. The harder you pull, the further it's gonna drag and the longer it's gonna become. All right now, all of a sudden, we got this cool little bit of a mountain at the base of our other mountain or another little peak, some sort of something with all that little pink fog in the back. It's fantastic. Reminds me of somewhere in Utah, you get all these jumbled up piles of rocks and trees off in the distance and things fall from here. They end up down here all twisted and upside down. It's fantastic. All right, now let's take some of that. We're well, gonna have to make some more. A little bit of the blue, a little bit of the white. I'm gonna make up some of that shadowy color. Same that we did, a little bit of the darkness. Mix it all up. Bam, 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 into this very pretty color. It doesn't have to be the exact same color. You don't want it to be exactly the same. I like having mine that are in the front a little bit more blue. Right, maybe this guy comes in. See how the blue is a little bit darker of a blue? Or at least the blue is much more noticeable. There we go. Pull that guy off to the side. This beam in the center can sometimes be a pain in your bum. It really can. It tries to for me anyway. There we go. Pull it off to the side. And again, you can go back in, especially in the, the back, and add little bits of rocks that maybe are too thick to get covered. It's just you can't get anything to cover those guys. They're, they're too sharp, too jagged. Okay, we'll wipe off our knife. We're going to come back. And we're gonna grab up our little bit of snow. Do we have any snow left? That would be fantastic. If not, we can always just grab up a little bit of white. Come over here, bounce it in until we get to our thing, slide it down, just like that. Come back up here, slide it down, slide it down, slide it down. Make sure your angles are right, right? This one looks odd. Gotta make sure it goes out flat. It has to be flat off to the center. And it always looks a little better to me if a little bit more of it is exposed to the light than it is the darkness, right? Pull that off to the side over there. Just let it mix in. That's perfectly fine, just like that. And that's what's great. It doesn't have to look like anything. It doesn't have to look like mine. Look, we're doing the same thing. We're going back up into the mountain or into the snow. Now this way, since we did it this way before, we got to go this way, right? It's not just a random thing. Poof, just like that. All right, now let's get rid of this little section of white down in there. And we'll make that our far away little bit of shoreline or we could add more snow and continue on. We could do whatever. This could be water, it couldn't. It's all up to us what it's gonna be, right? And that's literally my favorite part. Let's get this bit a little bit more. Mine was very much of a straight line. I did not like it. There we go. Just gotta blend it until you like it, Joshy. Yeah, that's not bad. Again, all we're looking for is the base color in the background. And we forgot to put in our little faraway clouds and all sorts of stuff. So we can very easily do it with just a little bit of white and a fan brush, just like that. And maybe we'll chuck in, just bounce them in. 
right? Very far away off, little, far off little floaters, just like that. All it is is a mess, right? It's literally what a cloud is. It's just a nasty mess. What a mess it is. And make sure we got a soft brush. There we go. Nice, soft, little bit of a floated cloud back there. And that's the best part about it. It doesn't have to look like anything. It could be a soft little poof. It could be anything you want it to be. We could even take and put in, since we said we were going to, let's put it off this side. I'm always worried about the angle when I'm doing a, a chemtrail like that. So be mindful of your angles. Want it to be sort of straight. Right, it can be a little bit wavy and a little bit off because it's not a perfectly straight thing up there. But be mindful of your poles. The pull of that brush is going to decide what it's going to look like, right? So be careful. There we go. Fantastic little thing. Now, what can we do down here? Let's add a little bit more snow. We'll extend this guy a little bit more, bring him down just another, another level. Maybe here's a little bit of another rock that lives in front of him. All right, comes up over here. I'm not trying to get too high up on this guy, but we do want to push him back the littlest bit, right? Have it pull out over here. This is looking fantastic. Watch, we're going we're gonna to cut that piece off right there. They'll have a little flat mesa top. This totally reminds me of just the dead center of Utah. And maybe it's because as you're watching this, this might be actually right where I am, getting more footage and doing more videos of uh, upcoming things, right? Because as of right now, you're watching this, I am on vacation and uh, we're having a blast. So even though I'm still responding to you, like, Josh, how are you still responding to us if you're on vacation? I know when I have the time, if I'm not in the pool, I will be responding to you guys. So send your comments in. I love when you guys tell me, you know, what an awesome job that I'm doing or how good of a teacher I am that really boosts my confidence level. And uh, sometimes I feel like I, I'm sort of losing it. And, uh, and when you guys say things like that, it really, it, it, it gives me a big boost. So thank you guys for that. And, uh, don't think just because, oh, Josh is a pro, or at least you think I'm a pro, um, that I don't still appreciate nice comments. So just want to say thank you for all the, uh, all the niceness, guys. I love you. I really love you. All right, let's pull this guy out to here. This is like a snowy bit, you know, somewhere off in, somewhere off in Utah. It's what it reminds me of. I don't know. Where does it remind you of? Tell me. Where do you see yourself when you are standing looking out at this scene right here? Nice little snow-covered mesa top. Pull it down, shape it, right? You can always go back, fix it, do all sorts of things. Gotta put a little, little bit right on the top. A little flat little section up there. You're like, Josh, you've only done half. Well, I know, we're gonna put the other half in the shadows. Gotta be halvesies, right? It's Dutch, you got a little bit of white, a little bit of shadow. Going Dutch. Yeah, hey, uh, can you pay your half? Because I'm kind of short this month. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? No, everyone's all good with it. <laughs> Gotta have a little shadow, right? And I love little differences. Shadow into deep shadow into that bright sunlight again, where maybe the sun just picked it up and it started to come down here. This is why I love doing ones like this, guys, where we just let it grow and we see where we end up. Eventually, we may be looking at some water right here, or we may not. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? And it really depends on your angles of how you pull that knife that's gonna decide what your, your little ridges are gonna look like, okay? So, don't wanna run out of paint, that's for sure. Gotta drag it all the way out. Stretch it to its limit. Stretch it to the limit. There we go. Okay, again, we can come in very softly with the opposite direction of how we pulled our knife. Go up the side, go up this side. All right, very soft little pulls. And you have this very soft little bit of snow covered mountain. It's all kind of grow. What is all this down here? What's happening? What is happening everywhere? Let's see if we put a little bit of white, maybe the, maybe the sun got its reach and it 
came back over here somewhere. Just so we can stretch it out. All right, take that, start to pull it down and away. Maybe it comes down this way or it goes down that way. It doesn't have to all be the same direction, right? If anything, Josh has taught us anything. He's taught us it doesn't all have to be the same directional pulls. That is for certain. Just like that. And then, again, you don't even want it to be the same amount of brightness throughout everything. It gives shadows and depth. So keep it like that. All right, right down to our base, right? Our base of operations down here. And again, we don't even have to put water in. You really don't. You really don't even need it, I swear. What I think we do need, though, is just a bit of that far away bit of snow back here, and then we can chuck in our, our trees again. And that way, it's gonna look nice, way back there. Ooh, look at that, that even looks good just without the, without the trees. Like there was a lip right there, it came down, covered over all of them, a little avalanche happened. And then we can come back in with our darkness, and put in like a little bit of a line back there just by mushing it in, mush it mush it and then kind of pull it away stretch it that's all we really need little differences in color back there little slabs of rock that are laying on top of each other and all these little details that someone's going to look at your painting and go man i need to buy this painting look at the details on this and a lot of them we just sort of made up right we didn't really do much didn't do much all right let's put We could do a giant old tree. Everyone's like, no, please, no giant old trees, please. Just some far off stuff. There we go. A little bit of shadowy. Gotta have some shadow underneath that. Otherwise it just didn't look right to my brain. There we go. All right, Josh, stop stalling. What we do need is just a little bit more of our kind of cloudy mess over in this spot. And all that's going to do is just kind of blur that area between the blue and the, the brighter color. Just like that. Fantastic. Kind of blocks it off, pushes it further back. All right, now we're going to have a little trail that comes out here. All right, or we could just do all these trees at the bottom. Giant bits of tree here. We could do a far off bit of uh, forest over here. There's so many places we could go things we could do. It almost looks like Utah in the winter. I love it. Utah in the winter. Josh is from Utah, if anybody doesn't know. The ski state, baby. We got the best snow in Utah. It's fantastic. So, and I'm literally there while you're watching this video right now. I'm in Utah hanging out and it is fun. Let me tell you. I wonder if like the smallest little piece of light might hit a, a rock off in the distance over there. And it starts to slide away. Just the smallest little detail as we still stall. Okay, let's think about this. We could do a path, we could do a trail, we could do a, we could do all sorts of stuff. We could just keep doing rocks. We could leave it like it is. We could do all sorts of things. I do wanna put a couple big trees in though. So let's have, maybe we'll pop some in over here and like almost like they're on a, a hill perhaps. Let's throw a little bit of snow back here. Just start to brighten up this area. Let it blend in with that bit that's here, right? Scraping it, just being nasty with it. Like it owes me money, just being nasty with it. There we go. Scraping that over there. All depends on our brush strokes though, so just be careful. You don't want it to uh, look strange. It's gotta look correct. It's gotta look correct. I think we even need a little bit more over here. And then this will no longer be water, it will be land. And just on those little strokes, you get cool little details in there. You don't have to blend them all away. And it looks like it's a, whoosh, it's a snowy day. The wind is blustery, right? Cool little things happen. All right, let's get rid of that over there. A little bit of our white over here, just to kind of fog everything up. We don't know what's happening, right? 
Now we can come in, why don't we put, we could do a whole nother giant big bit of rock. We could do all sorts of stuff. We could literally do whatever we want. We have this whole giant paint, a uh, giant amount of paint. Let's see, let's go back in here. We're gonna do this whole huge, ugly, giant old thing right here. All right, big, nasty, thick paint coming in just like that. Now we're gonna start to build off that guy and we can go up and start to have another little piece of a mountain down here, or a rock or something that's gonna block off all the rest of that stuff. All right, but we want it to be dark, we want it to be nasty. It's gotta be thick. Thick and large, I and mean, it's gonna cover everything, it's gonna push all that stuff back. Okay, we're gonna come over here, start to push it down on an angle like this. It's gotta flow down on this angle. So grab our guy, we don't have to be very thin. You know, you don't have to pull very hard. There's, there's a lot of paint here. There we go. We do wanna cover all this stuff down here. Be nice and dark. Doesn't have to be our land, but it doesn't all have to be rock either, right? There we go, nice little thick bit as it comes out here. This whole other little piece. That's really great, I like that. Okay, we're gonna mix up a little bit more of our blue, a little bit more of our white, as our kind of bluish shadowy colors, a little bit of the dark just to make it dull, right? It doesn't have to be super bright blue like the sky. Nice little dull section. And then maybe back in here, we get all these cool little things that start to happen in our little piece of rock. Different little things. And all these are just our negative space bits, our shadows. Keep it nice and dark down around the bottom down here. We'll have something special. This over here, maybe we'll pull him this way. This guy, maybe he's got a little bit of blue in there. It all depends on what you want yours to look like, right? Come back, grab up our white again. And let's go up into this guy. Just let it fall down into that deep dark. Doesn't all have to be the same. And it's gonna to wanna to blend together. The more and more you touch it, the more it's gonna to wanna to blend with that dark color underneath because it's so thick. So let it, let it blend with it. It'll change, it'll be a whole new thing. A whole new world, right? It'd be fantastic. Just let it sit just like that. That is so epically great right here. Right? Little rounded areas where you can pull down. Doesn't all have to be straight or the same or anything, and they don't all have to light up. That is for sure. Maybe a couple little pieces lit up on the back of that guy. Little things that just light. It's just fantastic. All fantastic. Right, a little bit of snow down around the bottom. If we can get any to come off of the knife over here, guys, then we'll be out of more, we'll be out of paint. We won't have any more paint to go. Nice little swipe right up the side, make it nice and soft. Look at that, and it helps it dry faster too. You wanna to go with the angles of your swipes of your knife. So rotate your brush handle over, back around, right? Don't wanna have it be too crazy. And going to the top is up to you. You know, it's gonna be difficult the higher and higher you go up there. All right, let's take this last little bit of our dark paint that we have. And we're gonna make up a big old tree to stand at the base of these rocks. Somehow he's, he's still living out here. All right, we're gonna take our brush right through this nice thick pile of paint, just like that. Nice knife-like edge. Pull it out so it's very sharp. And then maybe over here we'll do like a, yeah, we'll do a little guy like this. And the further and further and further we go down, the harder and harder and harder we push in. And then it becomes thicker at the base, right? Just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now go back, grab up that paint again. Just like so. And this guy we're gonna make into a little pine tree. Not a crazy huge pine tree, just a just a little old pine tree, right? Come back in very softly and try to stay out of the way. Tap up, leaving little shapes, little differences. Some places are thicker, some places aren't, right? It's a it's hard to grow up here in the mountains. It's not getting all the water that it needs. It's hard to grow up here. It's a hard life. Hard life up here. Right? We'll skip down. Again, just sort of kind of filling over. Little differences, little different things happening. We can even make the trunk a little bit bigger down here. I don't want to cover over all of that thick white snow, but if you did, 
what you want to do is get rid of it in the areas that you're going to work. All right, so kind of decide the shape of your, your tree and get rid of all that excess paint. Look at that, that big, giant, thick bit of paint. That's going to be hard for us to go over. And we don't want it to be hard. We want it to be easy. So we're going to go in. See how we're smushing it? We're mashing it on. And we're growing. We're getting thicker. We're getting more wide as we get down to the base. Cover over our other guy. You can go all the way down to the base down like that. I'm going to grab up all the paint you can get, though, because you want it to be thick. You want to have those little bits of fingers that are growing off the side, kind of hoping that something's going to reach out and grab them, right? Fill our little guy in just very lightly. And bam, bam, just like that. Got a wicked little pine tree. And this guy we can add limbs to. So we'll grab a little bit of our paint thinner onto our brush. Just a little bit. Got to make the paint runny. All right, then we'll come over here. Pull off our little branches. Of course, there had to be like a giant ball of paint for some reason as I go to do that. So now we'll just have to extend our trunk a little bit higher. Right? Add a few little imperfections so the people that are really staring hard at it, trying to get it to, trying to find something wrong, you know what I mean? Even they have something to find and look at, all these little imperfections. I love imperfections. It makes it perfect to me. Because nature is not a perfect thing. It's a very much of an imperfect thing. So having your imperfections is what makes your painting look more natural, more real. At least to me. You don't want to go fight against all this thickness. All that thick white paint. It's going to be hard to drag your brush. See how it's, it's I'm just even at the base, it's hard for me to pull it over without it breaking, coming away. Right? So you don't want to try to fight against all that. If you do, you have to get a lot of it up on your brush so it's very liquidy and kind of go through just very lightly. Don't try to be a hero. You don't need to. You don't have to fight all that paint because sometimes it can be a lot. There we go. Make sure we get our, if it's, if it's thick out on the end, it's got to be thick where it connects down here, right? Just has to be. Okay, let's take our littlest bit of white that we can get. See if we can create a little bit of bark just by swiping over to the side on this guy. Getting high up as you can go, as you can get it, right? Cool little bit of a thing. Take our smallest little bit of blue, we're gonna go back from the other side and just let those guys mix in very lightly and you'll get a very cool little shadowy bit of a tree. Always, you can take a little bit of liquid white, add it to the your, your tree branches where you think a little bit of snow might stick might have landed, might have stuck there, and just kind of highlight your branches. Just with straight up liquid white, you gotta have a very, very small amount though. Don't need a whole huge bit, and all of your white sections really can't connect either, right? If they're all connected, the whole thing is covered in white, and that's not really realistic, right? Again, it's, you have to leave some of that dark shadow underneath too. Cover the top, leave the dark shadow. Looks fantastic. Okay, now for this guy, we're gonna to switch to a micro fan brush. We're gonna go in, we're gonna grab up our liquid white paint. We're gonna go over here to our titanium white paint and get any last little bit of it, snag up some of that blue. Ooh, even more, that blue looks good. Right, little last bit of it. You wanna have a fair amount of liquid white though, otherwise it's not gonna be light enough or thin enough to stick, okay? Don't need all of it all in the bristles. Just at the end, come over here. We're going to tap down on the side where our trunk is, where you might see an extended bit of a trunk in there, right? And we can always cover over it if, we, if you don't like it. It's literally that simple. You're like, okay, there's my trunk. And then you can literally go back in and cover over the whole thing like it was never even there. Okay, little dabs up. You don't have to cover all these dark shadows. We put them there as a guide, right? If we cover them all, then we're not going to have any depth to our tree. We're going to have this big, thick, white tree, like a Christmas tree in your house covered in that fake snow, right? Don't have to even get all of the branches. They're never all going to be the same amount of white, so don't worry about it. 
right? And as we get down to the bottom, we've picked up so much paint on our brush that it's harder to get these guys to get light. And that's fine. We don't need it to be real dark down around the bottom. That is not a necessity. It needs this, uh, sorry, real light down around the bottom. It needs to stay dark. I'm gonna forget what I'm talking about over here. You guys know I've always got so many things going on. Okay, that looks fantastic. What we do need though is a little bit more kind of a straight up black color down here just to keep it darker than everything else, right? You can't have it be all kind of crazy. Maybe we'll put one more piece of rock sort of in there and then kind of highlight that guy. Just like this, all right? A little jaggedy blue piece of rock. It's kind of covering the base of that tree. It's really cool. Really sort of neat. All in the shadows back here. Like the tree just kind of grew up out of a crack in the thing. It's very neat. All right, let's see. A couple little sticks, little twigs kind of growing off around the base. A little bit of life out there. And that's just a fantastic painting, guys. I'm really proud of that one. Well guys, that one came out fantastically. I love what we've done here and uh, just how easy it was to get it to happen, right? We didn't really do a whole lot of things that were, that were too hard. So I really hope you guys try this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you share it. Uh, I can only reach so many people um, and I need your help reaching the rest. So share it around, send it to your grandma, send it to your mom and dad, send it to your neighbor, say, hey, check this guy out. He does some pretty cool stuff. And uh, you never know, they may turn into a, my, my best customer or our newest fan and have all sorts of fun with us just like you've had today. So uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for watching, for checking it out. And, uh, you know, I love you. Without you, there is no me. I would not be up here. I wouldn't be standing here painting. We wouldn't be doing this kind of a thing with our lives, right? So, and, and I love it. I, it's, I, it's literally my dream. So thank you. I love you for, for hanging out, for watching, for tuning in, for sharing for hitting the little emoji buttons, for trying the paintings and posting them and tagging paint with Josh. And it's just so much fun. I just love you guys. So uh, until then, and before we start crying, I, uh, I'm getting so emotional. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take care. We'll see you guys later. You guys have the rest of a good day and bow pow. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. And the bloopers have set in. Yips. All right, let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Why are my eyes closed? Hey, welcome to the painting show where I don't even see. How can I teach you anything? I can't even see what we're doing. How did I do this? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Hey guys, whoa guys. Hey, hey dudes, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we're gonna do a thing. It's because I got a beard. That's too, it's too lazy to shave. <laughs> Oh, another one for the bloopers, okay. All right, here we do. Here we do, what? Who says that? This guy does, obviously. All right, and take. Hey, it's <laughs> a good idea, I should probably do that in the future. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20. This is not a 16 by 20, it's an 18 by 24. You're obviously thinking so, that's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you have all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it and we're gonna get to it to mother. I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry for that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a guy in his house. I'm not a pro. Okay, here we go. And let's do it. One, two, and juggling. Oh, oh. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. I know I look like Grizzly Adams, so we did like a grizzly cold scene and uh, just to match my disgusting facial hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. How did I get paint on my arm? You're supposed to be a professional. Hey. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Hi guys. <laughs> hey dudes. What's up guys? How many times can you go? Hey guys. I wonder if people even like that intro. Hey guys. Does it get you all pumped up and ready to go? Because that's what it does for me. Hey guys! Hey dudes! Bros! Dudes! Dude, you nailed it! That's how I always say when I'm typing it. Have you ever seen me go, dude! You nailed it, even if it's to a woman. I don't care. Dude is a is a multi-sex term. Dude! Hit out of the park, bro. All right, here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a beautiful 18 by 24 inch Sunrise Mountain 2, right? 
No one even knows Sunrise Mountain one, or was it sunset? No, it was sunrise. Okay, gorgeous Sunrise Mountain. This is the second version of this painting that uh, we're kind of. All right, maybe I should clean the brushes instead. That's why we're being thrown off by the brushes. Just knowing they're in the back of my mind, I'm gonna have to do them right after this. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we Hey guys, <laughs> dead serious, do it. Hi, thank you for tuning in. Welcome back to the show. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want a lot of bloopers. I really don't. Like I don't. I'm not doing this on purpose. <laughs> That's why I said get irritated. Because I'm not doing it purposely. All right. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. Beautiful Sunrise Mountain 2, right? Why do I keep saying that? Maybe you guys at the end of this blooper, it'll be like, I bet you it's called Sunrise Mountain 2. Okay. Do I paint and sparkles on me now? I'm so painty and sparkly. All right, here we go. Just fantastic color. You obviously think so. That's why you want to paint this painting. Final take. And we'll see if it actually is. If the video cuts off right now, then I actually nailed the final take when I said final take. Here we go. Hi. <laughs> it was not. It was not the, uh, it was not the last take. I did not do it. So maybe this time. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. Gorgeous sunrise painting. Giant frozen mountains covered in snow. Beautiful dead tree over here. Why is that beautiful, a dead tree? <sighs> they don't want to paint dead trees, Josh. Even though you do, they don't. I'm so cold I had to grow a grizzly beard just to paint it. So, <laughs> you're obviously excited about painting this painting and watching me just make another blooper. So maybe we can keep this in... Hey guys! Just like this so the camera goes out of focus. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. Gorgeous sunrise mountain with this snowy... I'm a terrible robot dancer. Gorgeous sunrise over these frozen snowy mountains. It's so cold I had to grow a scraggly beard just to stay warm enough to paint it for you, right? So you're obviously so excited about this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. You want to... Had it. Oh, I hate this shit. Hi guys, welcome. <laughs> it's so cold in here, I had to grow a scraggly beard just to paint it for you, right? You're so ex Okay, let's try this one more time. So you guys can have fun, and I can get done, and go do something else. Okay, here we go. And a one, and a two, and a... That's what it's like in here. When, uh, when I cut it, and you guys don't see the... That's what's going on. I think we have enough tapes, Josh. 